Hello, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to solve exponential equations. I already put some examples on the board and I'm going to quickly differentiate between just solving simple exponent problems and having exponential problems. What's the difference between them? I'm going to show you with a simple example. So, if you get a question like this, x squared equals 4 and they want you to find x well it's easy for you to take the square roots of both sides because you what you don't know is the base you know the exponent now when you know the base but you don't know the exponent then you have a simple exponent problem because you know the exponent okay so you can apply any kind of rule you want to apply to it you'll get your answer take the square roots of both sides you end up with x being equal you take the square root of both sides, that will be equal to plus or minus 2. You got your x. Okay, but what if what you don't know was actually the exponent? What if it was switched and the question became 2 to the x power equals 4? Well, you can't say take the square root because you don't know if this is 2. You can't say take the cube root because you don't know if that is 3. So what root can you take? Well, it appears you can't actually do any of those things. Well, as far as you want to stay away from um, logarithms, okay? As long as you just want to solve it without using logarithms, you'll have to learn how to express things in exponent form. So that's what you call an exponential equation, okay? So that's what you call an exponential equation equation and knowing how to solve this which is very easy also since you know what to do 2 to the x will be 4 is the same thing as 2 to the second and because the two bases are the same you can easily say that x is equal to 2 okay which is the same as this problem okay your x was 2 in the first place however it could get more complex than that when it gets more complex what do you do look at these examples Sometimes the laws of exponents cannot be applied. If you can't apply the laws of exponents, what should you do? That's what I'm going to show you today, and then I believe we'll be good. So I'm going to start with the very, very first example I wrote on the board, which is 3 to the x equals 27. I'm sure you know that this is going to be 3 to the x equals 3 to the third, because 3 times 3 times 3 is going to be 27. And because the bases are the same, you can say x is equal to 3. That's the solution to that. That's very pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, let's move on to the second question, number 2. Number 2 says 16 to the x is equal to 8. So, um, this looks a little bit awkward because there is nothing you can do to express 16 to the power of 8 that is just straight. So, you want to go back to a base that is common to 16 and 8. Let's try 8. What? Can you raise 8 to a power to get 16? 8 to the second power will be 64, not 16. So you can't do that. Um, let's try 4. Can you raise 4 to a power to get 16? Yes. 4 to the second power is 16. So it looks like we can change this. But can we raise 4 to a power to get 8? No. Uh, you, we can, but not a whole number, not an integer um, exponent. So we don't want to play with that. We want to use a common base between 16 and 8 that can give us some time to relax. Okay, so can we relax with number 2? Let's try it. Can we raise 2 to a power to get 16 and also raise 2 to a power to get 8? Yes, and that's the secret to solving these kinds of questions. You have to look for a common base. So the common base between 16 and 8 has to be 2, which is 2 to the fourth power. That's our 16 raised to power x will be equal to 2 to the third. Now, if you apply the laws of exponents, you have to multiply these powers together, these um, exponents. So you end up with 2 to the 4x power equals 2 to the third. You see, now we have common bases. We've simplified this to look like this now. We can say 4x is equal to 3. 
okay? So if we continue in this process, we can say that 4x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 3 over 4. This is your answer. Okay, so 16 raised to the power of 3 over 4 is equal to 8. You can punch that in your scientific calculator. You're going to get that. Okay, um, that's how that works. Now, the first two examples, I use them to, ex to establish this rule. Okay, now that you understand it, it's going to get a little bit tricky because you cannot express some numbers using a base. Okay, so you have to do something else. Let's move on to the next question. So for the third question, question number three, it says four to the x equals 20 minus two to the x. There's a problem. You cannot apply the laws of exponents to uh, an exponential equation that has more than two terms. You can see this is one term, one term. This is one term, one term. So we were able to apply the laws of exponents to solving it, okay? But in this one, you have three terms and you can't combine the terms because of this arithmetic sign of subtraction. So you have to find a way to modify this to modify this. So watch what you're supposed to do. These kinds of questions that have these terms tend to become quadratic equations. When you see them most of the time, you're supposed to solve them using quadratic equations. So see what's going to happen. I'm going to transform this so it looks like this, but there's nothing I can do to this. So firstly, let's bring everything to this side. So I'm going to have 4, x, 4 to the x. If I take this here, if I take this here, it becomes plus 2 to the x. Take this here, it becomes minus 20 equals zero. You cannot add this to this. They look similar, but they are different. Okay, so, but I can express this to look like a base. So I'm going to do this two to the second power raised to power x plus two to the power x minus 20 equals zero. I'll apply the laws of exponents and multiply these two together. It becomes two to the power two x plus two to the power x minus 20 equals zero. So at this point, it's beginning to look like they are the same, but let's see what happens. What happens if I decide to switch these so that this looks like 2 to the power of x squared plus 2 to the power of x minus 20 equals 0. What I just did now is to break this up like they were before, but instead of be this being on the outside, I brought this now, instead of be this being on the outside, it is now on the inside. Remember the commutative property of multiplication. A times B is the same thing as B times A. 2 times X is the same thing as X times 2. It doesn't matter how you arrange it. As long as you're multiplying them together, it's the same thing. That's the rule I just applied here. And you need to apply that rule every single time this happens. So let's see where we go from here. So at this point, all you have to do is... Um, this is squared. You see, it is not multiplied by 2. It is squared. So you can't add them together. You can't add m squared to m. No. So now, what you say is, let... Now that you found something that looks as simple as this, okay? You just say, let y be equal to 2 to the x. If you get to this point, you can easily substitute. See, instead of writing 2 to the x, you just write y. So this becomes y squared plus y minus 20 equals 0. y squared 
minus, sorry, plus y minus 20 equals zero. You have transformed an exponential equation into a quadratic equation. Now you can solve this quadratic equation. The easiest way I see right now is by factoring, okay? If you don't know how to factor quadratic equations, you can watch some of my videos, but we need that skill at this point to solve this. So now we've come to this problem here, okay? Um, I'm just gonna erase this so you can see what we have. Or maybe I can solve the rest of it on this side, okay? So let's say we move on to solving the quadratic equation, um, but I'm just gonna solve it here. So let's say you wanna solve the quadratic equation y squared plus y minus 20 equals zero. Remember, you can use any letter to represent this. So if you factor this, you're gonna have y squared plus five y minus four y minus 20 equals zero. Well, how do you do that? You just decide, you might wanna watch the other videos, okay? Because I wanna move on with this. I'll find two numbers you'll multiply that will give you negative 20. But when you add them together, you're gonna to get positive one. The two numbers are positive five and negative four. So you use them to replace this and then you factor, okay? So what's common to the first two terms? It's y, and then if you divide this by this, you get y, and if you divide this by this, you get five. You close that, minus what's common to these two, it has to be four, and that's um, y plus five equals zero. Well, this sign will change to plus because you're dividing by, remember, when you multiply it out again, this becomes negative 20. So that's how that works. So this is what we have. Now we have y minus 4 and y plus 5 equals 0. So y minus 4 equals 0 or y plus 5 equals 0. So finally, you have y equals 4 or y equals negative 5. So these are the two options you have. However, because this is a negative number and we're dealing with two raised to a power, an exponent, um, you just ignore this, okay? The negative answers will not work. You want to deal with the positive answers. So now we know y equals 4. Remember, at this stage, we said y equals 2 to the x. So for you to answer this, if y equals 2 to the x and your y equals 4, you just say since y equals 2 to the x, and that's equal to 4. You can easily solve it like we solved the first example I gave. 2 to the x, 2 to the x will be equal to 2 to the 2, and x will be equal to 2. Okay, that's how you solve that. Remember, when the question looks awkward, all you have to do is change it into a quadratic equation by doing this y substitution. I hope you got that. Now, let's answer the final question. Okay, I hope you got that. So here comes the final question. Let's quickly solve this and get it out of the way. The first thing you're gonna do is to apply the laws that brought this into effect in the first place, which is that when you divide two terms with a common base, you subtract the exponents. You remember that law? The law says x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b equals x to the power of a minus b. You, I'm sure you remember this law. So that's the law we're gonna apply here. But instead of going from left to right, we'll be reversing the order in order to solve our problem. So let's do that. So here it's gonna be simply three to the power of one divided by three to the power of two x. That's it. Okay, so be, because we've done this, everything else is easy. This is gonna be 24 plus three to the power of negative x. And remember, when an exponent is negative, it simply means you are doing repeated division instead of repeated multiplication. So this negative exponent, just as we did here, we divided, we're gonna be dividing also. So what you have here is a transformation of one, over three to the x. Remember that x to the power of negative one is one over x. That's a rule we know, okay? So that's what I just did there. Three to the power of negative x 
equals one over three to the power of x, okay? So with this, you can um, transform this and make sure the x is close to the three. So we write this as three over three to the x. Now I can put this squared outside equals 24 plus one over three to the x. Okay, now this one can be replaced with a y. So let's do the y substitution. Let y be equal to three to the x. Now, if you do this, you can change everything here into something that looks like this. Three over y squared equals 24 plus one over y. That's it. With this expression that you have, we can move on and say the LCM of this equation actually is y squared. So in order to clear the fractions, you just multiply each of the terms by the least common multiple, which is y squared. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to multiply. We say y squared times 3 over y squared will be equal to y squared times 24 plus y squared times 1 over y. Okay, with this, this is going to cancel this out. You're left with 3. Okay, this will cancel this out. Now, 24 times y squared will be 24y squared. And y will cancel one of these y's. You have one y left plus y. So if I rearrange this and make a quadratic equation out of it, what you're going to get will be 24 y squared plus y, when this moves over, it becomes minus 3, and that's equal to 0. So what's important now is to factor this quadratic equation. Well, remember, if you don't know how to factor quadratic equations, watch another of my videos, okay? Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and factor. The correct factors to use here to replace this positive y will be positive 9 and negative 8. Okay, you got that. So that's going to be 24y squared plus 9y minus 8y minus 3 equals 0. So with this, what is common to these two? Um, I know 3 is common and y is common, so I'm just going to take out 3y. What is left here will be 8y plus 3 minus what's common here is when there's nothing common, you assume it's 1. Okay, just write 1 into 8y plus 3 equals zero. Remember that these two must be the same unless you've made a mistake. Okay, I'm just going to finish this up with a red marker because um, my blue marker is getting faint on me. We shall not be faint. We shall not be weary. Let's go. So this is going to be um, 3y minus 1 and 8y plus 3 equals zero. So you equate this to 0, 3y minus 1 equals 0, or 8y plus 3 equals 0. That leaves you with y being 1 over 3, or y equals negative 3 over 8. Like I said, we don't want to deal with the negative ones because they won't work. What works is the positive number. So now you know your y is 1 over 3. This number you see is 1 over 3. So how do we do the transformation? This is the transformation. If y equals 3 to the x, and that y is 1 over 3, it means 3 to the x equals 1 over 3. 3 to the x equals 3 to the negative 1. That's the rule. That's 1 third written as an exponent. So what do you think? They have a common base, x equals negative 1. Now you know your exponential function. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this video. Once again, my name is Newton Okwoye. Don't stop learning, because those who stopped learning...